Hey, what's up, team? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology. This video is on functions three and seven and how they work within you. And uh, if, if you don't understand the cognitive function stack and you know you don't really get the pieces underneath the MBTI, MBTI code, then this video is probably not for you right now. Uh, it's a little bit deeper stuff. And it's also stuff that I'm still playing with here and I'm still working on trying to understand and also to add some analogies and stuff so that uh, I can bring it out and share it with more people. So that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video. I'm going to be taking those analogies and hopefully uh, putting them in a light that lets you see how those functions three and seven are working within you and how they're coming out at some awkward times and maybe what you can do about it all right so uh, let's just get right started I'm gonna use myself as an INFP for most of this as the example because I just have the most experience with myself <laughs> it's a little bit easier to talk about my third function my tertiary function is introverted sensing and my seventh is extroverted sensing so they're both sensing it's just flippy flopped in opposite directions all right and so I've always considered the tertiary function to be the newbie or the rookie, you know, if you want a little bit nicer name for it. And it's just like, it tries to do right. It's, it's wide eyed and hopeful, like a newbie, like a child. Uh, it, it's like really excitable and um, it just wants to play and enjoy things, right? But it doesn't quite know how to, to hang with the big boys. It can't do what the dominant function and auxiliary function do in the same way. Like they, it doesn't have the time. It doesn't have the experience. It just got to level 10, right? And it's being thrown into these level 40 dungeons or whatever like that. And it's like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying, right? And it's, it's having fun while doing it too, because you know, when you start playing a game and uh, you're just experimenting with things, it's a lot of fun it's exciting it's like well i could do this i could do this i could play with this character you know i could buy these random items why not because that sounds cool or these this talent tree could go like this you know i like that ability and i like this one way over here it's not like that heavy it doesn't really have that effect on you like if you mess up in that area it's not gonna ruin your life and that's kind of how i feel the newbie comes out uh, so it has its heart in the right place. It tries, but, you know, it just doesn't always cut it. And eventually, I feel that it does level up. Like, my connection to introverted sensing right now, this guardian style, this methodical guardian, is a lot better. I'm getting there. I'm incorporating it into my life more. I'm building some better routines. I'm looking into my past. Uh proactively to try to set up a better present and future. And that's what introverted sensing is trying to do. It's comparing to the past and the present through sensory details, which is coming out through like facts and historical stuff. It's giving you that will to focus on that kind of information. Uh, and, and it's getting better for me, right? So I feel that it can level up maybe from the newbie to something slightly higher like a normal player good job you can do stuff right i don't need to constantly babysit you but um the seventh function is a little bit different so the 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 third and seventh function are both childish um the thing is though the newbie the third function is just a newbie it it's, doesn't have negative intent but the seventh function, as John Beebe calls it, the trickster, is kind of malicious. It's, it's trying to push those buttons and just mess with people, mess with you as well. And it just kind of, it is tricky. Um, and I consider it to be like a troll. It's, if you imagine, if you play League of Legends, which I don't anymore because of trolls, uh, if you've played that or any other game, really, uh, you, you know, this archetype right here. And it's this, that person that just like, I'm going to mid or feed and you can't really do anything about it. You're stuck in this double bind. Like, 
okay, I could yell at the guy or girl and, you know, curse them out or, you know, just I'm going to pick mid and fight that. And really, you're not going to win. You're not going to win. And that's what a double bind is. It's kind of that damned if you do, damned if you don't. You just can't win either way. And that's what the trickster is doing. That's what that archetypal energy is doing. And it just happens to be. For me, extroverted sensing fits into that slot. Um, anything else I need to talk about it? Let's see. Uh, manipulation. It's childish, but it's more irresponsible, more reckless. Uh, and it's it's ruthless in a lot of ways too. All right. So for me, it's extroverted sensing and extroverted sensing is like, I like to think of as this adaptive gladiator or berserker who's just fully aware of the present moment and able to dodge and move and just flow with and adapt to what is coming at him. I've, I'll bring out these again. Um, I use these in the other video for uh, two and six, right? So I imagine this is introverted sensing. All right, it's more um, cautious and careful, and it's gonna walk up there and take the steps. And for me, it's a newbie, okay? It's, it's maybe got a hole in its shield or something. It doesn't quite know how to handle it. It's just kind of bouncing around. And then this is extroverted sensing for me. And so when I'm trying to do something, like I'm trying to be careful and sneak through my house so I don't wake the sleeping baby, this guy messes with me. This guy is like, oh, you got this. You're fine, you're fine. And then I kick a, a chair or something like that. I drop something that I've never really struggled with those issues before until I'm trying to engage in this and it just wants to troll me. And it keeps coming out like that. This is lately something that I've really been struggling with. And so for an I and P, um, I think a lot of us can understand this. It's that inability to really deal with the physical surroundings and our sense of space in the moment. We bump into things quite often. Maybe we don't really pay attention to what's going on around us in that physical way because we're a lot of times stuck in our heads or in our past. Um, and so that's how it's coming out for me a lot of times. The seventh function, the troll, is not always bad. And that's, it was a difficult thing for me to think about because like nobody really likes trolls, but I feel that trolls can be good. Trolls can bring about change. And like, for example, I used to play, let's go back to League of Legends. I used to play uh, Nidalee support. I played a little Shaco support. Um, and I played Zyra support when Zyra was mid only, like right when she first came out. I wasn't doing it to be a troll. It was, I like those characters. I feel that I'm good at it and I can protect my team through this. I can protect myself through using the trickster function. Um, if somebody is attacking me outside of games, if somebody is like berating me or something like that or insulting me or somebody I care about, extroverted sensing can come out there and start flexing and be like, if you want to do this, then you know, you're going to have to deal with those physical repercussions. It's not something I normally go to, but it is something that's there. And I feel that at a point when the troll is actually not, doesn't have negative intent, it can turn into this kind of maybe meta breaker or something like that, some other name for it, right? Um, not quite thought out too much because it's just, what's a good name for a troll? The, the positive troll, I, I don't know. <laughs> The really important thing to remember about the seventh function and the third function is that in order for the newbie to feel safe, in order for you to connect more to your tertiary function, whatever that may be, uh, a lot of times it is important for you to go to the seventh function first. It's important for that kind of rowdy, rambunctious child to come out and assert himself or herself so that the newbie is like, okay, I can, I can be here too. And I'm kind of protected by this guy, by that trickster, by that troll. If you want to bring it back into a game sense, it's like, 
all right, you get a lot of trolls. They, they're in your games and it's just frustrating and they're doing all this stuff that's just really driving you crazy. And then when just a normal newbie comes out, there's this guy who really doesn't know what he's doing. It's a sense of relief. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I can work with you. I can try to help you out a little bit. We can deal with this because you don't have that negative kind of attitude and you're not trying to cause problems and being malicious about it. That's how I see it anyway. So um, please give me your opinions down below. If anything I said rang some bells or if you have your own personal experiences that you can communicate to all of us because what has helped you will likely help somebody else. All right. So keep up the lifelong questing. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you very much, patrons. Y'all are awesome. Peace.